make sure I have all the proper shit here. Bowl of the tuna salad with a piece of my homemade bread. No, Penny, I'm so sorry, but right now is not the time. I'm so sorry. Right now, no, no go blue, no. I feel bad, but what am I gonna do? Got the water bottle, got the camera. Getting in the vehicle to go pick up the King of Pain. Can't believe it, almost can't believe it. Okay. I'm sorry, Penny, I love you. Later, okay? I take you outside later. I don't know, do it later, watch out. I'm already, is that a good angle? I'm already late. Feeling bad already. Shit, I want this thing to, I guess this might work, let's see. It's the thing when you don't have the goddamn thing with you, you know? I guess that's gonna work. Uh, shut the fuck up. You know, one thing I was thinking just now, I was like, man, I'm glad. Fuck, fuck. Okay, it's okay. I gotta go. I forgot to put this mix on my goddamn phone. Mix is in my new song, Going Blind. Which the live performance of did really well because people think it's a Kiss song. It's not. Obviously. I'll tell you what, big, you big music video shoot weekend. Drive with your knees, you can eat the tuna salad. I'm not vegan right now, okay? So chop my dick off. So, you know one thought I had? I'm glad, that always reminds me of Michael Hitchcock. I am glad you didn't cut your hair. From the Forgotten Room, remember my radio play? Forgotten Room. I am glad. He goes, I am glad you didn't cut your hair like the others. I'm glad that uh, we don't yet live in an age where mm, we just choose it wrong. Okay, I'm glad we don't, I am glad. Go listen to the Forgotten Room, episode two, Thieves of the Temple. It's got a, uh, I'm like racing to go pick up the King of Pain. It's got a line where Michael Hitchcock, I think it's like maybe 20 minutes in or something. It's when you finally meet like Dr. Melvin Cutter they're all in the van and he's like, I am glad you didn't cut your hair like the others. And Sheenie's like, what? What's with the creep factor? That's how she says it. You know, I learned something from that character, Jeannie. We were doing that, again, if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, go to Spotify, YouTube, Apple, and just look up The Forgotten Room. It's a radio play, I made two episodes. I have more, I have two more, I have one actually recorded and everything, the performance is recorded, I just ran out of time at that time in my life, and boy, it was, were those fucking things time consuming to make, Jesus Christ, you have no idea, and then the fourth one I have written by Trent Haga, it's really good, anyhow, when we were doing that, I was trying to tell, uh, what's that actress's name, it's not Kelsey Vahid, um, I feel bad, I don't remember her name, but there's a lot of people in, involved in that. So I remember I was trying to tell her how I wanted her to sound, and I was like, you know, like, uh, kind of like Brooklyn-y, you know, but like kind of naggy, like a, a like a the kind of girl who would hang out with gangsters, you know, in the twenties and shit. And nobody was really. They were like, okay, how does that sound? And finally, oh my God, I feel terrible. I don't remember his name. He's got a very plain name. It's like Joe R. Smith. He's a fucking incredible actor. I, you know. Sorry, I don't remember right now, but he was like, a gun mole. And I was like, a what? And he was like, a gun mole. And I was like, 
what's the, I've never heard, what is a gun mole? And he's like, it's literally that. It's the fucking girl who hangs out with the fucking bad guy in those kinds of movies. It's called a gun mole. And I had no idea. I'd never heard that term before. So you learn something new every day. For example, my Spanish teacher didn't know the word perky. One of, I always try to make them laugh. So one of my exercises, I was like, um, you know, it was a woman and, you know, I get up at this time. It was like ex explaining your routine. I get up at this time. I brush my teeth at this time. Then I go to work. And so there's a picture of a cartoon woman sitting at a desk. And I was basically saying in Spanish, like, I have big perky tits. Um, so naturally it makes sense that I'm a secretary. In Spanish, and my teacher was like, what is that word? And it was, you know, uh, grande, grande, grande tetas terentes. And he was, I was like, terentes? And he was like, I have no idea what that is. And I was like, T-U-R-G-E-N-T-E-S, terentes. And I couldn't remember what it was at the time. And I finally looked it up and I was like, oh yeah, perky. Um, God, is this, I wonder, I hope this is tracking. I hope this is making a little bit of sense. And so I finally told him like, here, here's the word, it's perky. And he's like, I've never heard it. So I sent him pictures of like perky tits and, and then I told him also, like, it can be an annoying employee, like somebody who's like a little too perky, you know? Chipper. I told him chipper is an antonym, and in terms of the physical form, saggy would be an antonym. You know, we're talking about language. So I learned gun mole that day. So what I wanted to say, God, this is all from just saying, I am glad. But I'll tell you what, I am glad that we don't yet live in an era where your cell phone can get you in trouble, at least until you actually commit a crime. What do I mean by that? What does that mean to me? I'll tell you what that means for me, okay? Mainly, I remember I remember this time when I was like, you know, I made my videos, I made a, a blog. My blog was like, you know, how to kill people. It was something ridiculous. I don't even remember what it was, but it was talking about like, I'm, I wanna kill a man and here's how I'm gonna do it. It was a blog, it was fake. It was like a, She was like, damn, I don't even know the right pronoun now. Blue Bliss became a man. He, I suppose. But back then it was she, so I'm gonna go with she. She was like, look, it, that's legal now, but that might not be legal in 10, 10 years. Like, you could get in trouble for that. I thought it was ridiculous then. And I still think it's ridiculous, especially considering that about God, almost 10 years have passed since she said that. It's not unfathomable to me that that could happen one day, but you know, one thing people fail to take into account when they give you these doomy predictions about the future, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not a bad scene and that it's as doomy as you can imagine, but when it comes down to like, they're gonna arrest you just for saying something publicly, or they're, you know, that happens once in a great while, and obviously it's big news because it's a total violation of your civil rights and stuff. Um, but one thing people don't factor in, I think, when they're giving you these doomy predictions about your own personal freedoms, whereas your freedom of speech, for example, is concerned. And yes, leave Twitter and everything else out. Like, of course, those are private companies. Of course, they're censoring it. They've admitted it. That's happened forever. I'm talking about, like, you can't go on the street and be like, I mean, a bunch of words I can't even say anymore. But uh, let me just say, uh, you go on the street and you say, I'm going to kill a man right as a joke or something or you have your stand-up comedy special and you're like i'm going to kill a man you know we don't live in an era yet where you're going to get arrested for that okay so i'm just saying similarly i mean what are you guys doing confusing me similarly i'm glad we can't get arrested for your text messages until after the fact and then they factor them in what i mean by that is of course if you're let's say you're a homicidal maniac and you uh you know kill kill somebody of course, they're going to look back through the text and they're going to be like, oh, here, here he is, like, plotting it and talking about it with his, I don't know, I don't know who you talk to about killing your wife these days. Somebody on the dark web, I guess. And why am I saying that? Because I was just having this great text interchange with the King of Pain today. I'm sorry. Humor, humor should not have boundaries. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. No. 
oh, it's too soon. Oh, it's too too racial. It's too mean. It's too sexist. Oh, it's too transphobic. Well, look. It's classist. It's ageism. It's ableism. That list goes on forever, and I get it. And I want to clarify. I, well, does that mean you would go to the funeral? You would go to somebody's funeral, and as they were lowering the body into the ground, be like, Hey, everybody, he's worm food now. No, of course not. Fucking kidding me? I, why would I do that? <laughs> is that anecdote funny to me? Yes, of course it is. It's funny because I was just talking to my buddy. I'll leave him nameless. I'll call him M for the moment. And I was texting him, making jokes about a dead friend of ours. He's been dead for over 20 years. And the jokes weren't like, ha ha ha, his soul's burning in hell. It was literally the worm food joke. I was envisioning this this poor bastard's uh, poor mother being, saying, my son has been worm food for nearly 20 years. And I'm sorry, that is funny to me. I'm not actually sorry. Um, that's a funny joke to me, okay? So this guy couldn't take it. Didn't like it. Telling me I'm so callous, so heinous, you're cruel. Well, cruelty, if you look up the definition of cruelty, You got uh, basically intentionally or willfully causing harm or suffering to another. So with my joke about my dead friend, who, you know what? Jesus Christ, I'm glad somebody's talking about him at all. He's forgotten. That's fucked up to me. That's actually fucked up to me. Making jokes is not, making jokes is just never fucked up to me. Almost, I mean, almost never. I'm sure I could find a situation. So, with cruelty, who am I being cruel to? Who is the subject of my willfully causing harm or suffering? A guy who's been dead 20 years? How much suffering can I possibly inflict on him? He's fucking dead. This is a hot button topic for me right now because I've recently had some real problems in my personal life as a result of more or less me just being my authentic self at all times and pretty radically that's just who i am and that's not to brag or it's just a fucking facts sometimes people don't get your humor sometimes people don't like your humor sometimes people can't handle your humor you know i'm not a fucking vegetable i'm aware of that Anyhow, that's a whole other topic. There's this, this issue I'm having. Too personal. Ooh, you like that? Yeah, there's certain things I don't talk talk about in my videos sometimes. Maybe I'll go full Howard Stern one day. What do I get out of it anyhow? I don't fucking make a penny from these stupid videos. YouTube does. Just made a video. Hopefully you saw it where I'm talking about that. Hmm. So, I'm just saying, I really revel in the fact that you can say basically anything. Remember the classic joke, like, you couldn't say, like, you're going to K-I-L the president? You see what I did there? Like, there's a child around. Get him a T-O-Y. So funny. Think about a former Soviet bloc country. Think about Uzbekistan, for example. I know you don't think about Uzbekistan. I'm not saying you should start thinking about it, but for the sake of this example, check it out. Former Soviet country, what does that mean? It means it was once part of the Soviet Union. And I can't speak for too many of these former Soviet countries but with Uzbekistan, and I know it's true of others, they keep the system in place still. It's part of the culture. So that place is basically like a police... Wow. Never seen a tailgate so close. Kind of cool. So they keep their police state, which basically means they basically have the KGB still, which is pretty scary. So anyhow, in Uzbekistan, if you're on the internet looking up videos where people are like, 
fuck Uzbekistan. But I find you on the internet, which a lot of those videos you can never even access from the internet in Uzbekistan because they'll automatically, uh, systematically, automatic, systematic, they'll be automatically and systematically blocked through, I don't know how the internet works over there, but that's already pretty wild to me. But let's say you get through and you see some, find some. Are, if you're watching those videos and the powers that be find out about it, there's a very good chance they're going to show up at your door. Are you scared yet? They're going to show up at your door and they're going to be like, I saw you were watching the video that shat all over our prime minister, or whatever they call him over there, the president. What's up? I mean, I don't, unfortunately don't possess enough understanding or knowledge about Soviet era um, Soviet bloc countries during that time to know how nasty it was but if you read if you read Red Notice by Bill Browder if you read uh, fuck what am I thinking of I mean go read the fucking Gulag Archipelago if you do a little bit of reading about that time you learn that oh my god you really you were you really couldn't say or do much that indicated your that indicated self-interest for example Comrade. But anyhow, again, that's this crazy time of not particularly great com not particularly great. I mean, uh, genocidal uh, communism, right? Am I saying it right? Fucking Joseph Stalin and the gulags and everything. So anyhow, I'm just saying, wow, ain't it great in America that uh, you can make a video saying, you know, fuck Joe Biden, fuck President Trump, fuck. Interesting. See what I did there? Fuck Joe Biden, fuck President Trump interesting you know what come on what are you gonna say you want me to talk about politics a, a senile a senile mentally ill a dementia having mentally deteriorated figurehead who's the president so funny coming off all that, that Trump hatred that was going on for so many years. It didn't die. It's back again. It's so This is so incredible. Such a bizarre time. You know Weird Al made a video? It's like Joe Biden and Trump. I really want to watch it. I watched, of course, it's Weird Al, so it's pretty brilliant. I watched like, I don't know, <coughs> 20 minutes of it. No, tw it's a fucking five minute song. Sorry, I watched like a, a minute of it. And it was pretty good. So I'm just, anyhow, back to the original joke. I'm not going to talk actual politics. I'm honestly not interested enough in them. And I know that's a privileged thing to say. But you know what? All the people who are like, I'm, I'm, not, pri I'm not so privileged that I can't care about it. Well, you also can't do anything about it. I highly doubt your vote counts. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't the system here be the same as it was in Russia, where the money decides who's going to be in power? Oh, we're worried that Yeltsin's not going to get elected. Oh, well, we've got this room full of, like, the richest oligarchs in fucking Russia, and they're going to make sure of it. So don't worry. Why would it be any different here? Because of democracy? So-called democracy? Anyhow, Hallett, my buddy Hallett, always gets mad at me because he's like, they do count. Your vote's counting. It's not a fake, you know. It sounds, I sound kind of stupid, maybe, and I sound like a conspiracy theorist if I start supposing that, um, they... <laughs> It sounds like a joke to say it if I start supposing that things don't really work the way they told you they did. Come the fuck on. I mean, if you don't know that by now, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, now the question I guess within that is how far different are they from what you're actually told? You know, how far different? And you can apply that to most anything. I'd say almost, uh, or not by not really including local governments. I don't think there's enough money and enough power and enough corruption to be really guiding um, those types of choices in the way that they're guided on a national. Oh fuck, I gotta get over it. this fucking thing's right here. Can I do it? 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 I gotta get over now. Shit, I done fucked up up in this bitch. I'm sorry to everyone who might fucked over there. Uh, 
this guy's trying to fuck me. All right, all right, all right, Jesus. Uh, this guy, isn't that funny if you, you make a mistake and they want to like squeeze you out? They're like, you're not getting in now, fuck you. You're gonna miss the thing and you're gonna be late because I said so. You shouldn't have done that, you fucked up. People want to punish you for your mistakes, for your ignorance, for your arrogance, whatever. Who gives a fuck? Anyhow, so I'm just saying, I'm glad, I'm really glad you can make a video shit talking a politician or political leader of this country or any other. I'm glad you can, I'm really glad you can text your friends and say things that you find funny, bad. How can I pull up? Jesus, where's that? I can't hear this, I found it. I'm glad that you can make jokes about things that you and your friends find funny that aren't politically correct. And also that you're not going to be investigated. Because forget about political correctness. Maybe you want to be like me. You want to make jokes that are like just as morbid as can be, right? As incorrect as you can get. And nobody is like knocking at your door and be like, I saw you sent this text message. We just, we have to investigate, you know, you set up a red flag. Now, that's a really scary prospect. That's why we know that it's scary because we know that kind of stuff basically from the world of fiction, right? That's not real life for us at least. Um, do I think it's possible that we'll one day get there? I think it's more than possible. I think it's probably likely. Probably likely. That's funny, right? It's probably likely. Hmm. Can you say both those? Is that a little redundant? I don't know. Anyhow, I guess there are a lot of things to say. It took me, what is this, 20 minutes now or something? It took me 20 minutes to say I'm glad that your phones aren't censored. I do realize that that information, you know, even though it's not censored, it is captured, it is recorded. I don't know if you're aware of that. I think most people are, but it still is a shocking thing to really consider and break down that. All your phone conversations, all your text messages, they're saved, they're stored, and even if the fucking United States got nuked, they have backups of them, I believe it's in Japan. What's up? What's up with that? Is that not the first like common sense question to ask? Like, wait, wait, what? Like, why are you keeping my phone conversations forever? But it's funny, you got, I think I've talked about this before, it's feeling familiar. You got two things that happened, right? I'm sorry, you got one, one big thing that happened. You had the Patriot Act where they kind of just like, were like, hey, we're gonna do whatever the fuck we want in the name of national security, so there's nothing you can do about it. And, okay, so there's two reactions to that. One is like, whoa, what the fuck? That's completely fucked up. I'm against this. They shouldn't be able to do that. I reject this. But you can't do anything about it unless you want to stop using technology. You know, and that doesn't work for most people's lives, plain and simple. And also, would it be kind of silly to do that based on a fear of I don't know what? So, you have this... Uh, have, uh, God, it's fucking beautiful out here. So you have two reactions. One of them is, hey, that's fucked up. They shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, think about Edward Stone. He was like, that's, if you believe all that, he was like, that's so fucked up that, uh, I'm fucking telling everybody about it. I'm compromising my own literal life, my own safety, my family's safety, and my freedom in order to tell you about it. That's how strongly he believed in it. And you know, if you talk to most people, they think it's cool. If you talk to anybody in the military, if you talk to anybody in intelligence, forget it. They think Edward Snowden, I mean, he, you know, there's lives on the line that he compromised them and it's completely unacceptable. And they fucking, they don't just like, you know, they're not just mad about it. They fucking resent him on a deep level. Like they probably want the, who was it, Hillary Clinton was saying he should be court-martialed and hung and, you know. So, uh, airport, five and three quarters miles. 
Okay, so that's one reaction. I'm sorry it's taking me so long to get food. That's one reaction. Another reaction is, which is the thing that I hear a lot of people do now, where they basically say, who cares? What do I care? What do you care? And it's like, oh, well, okay. I mean, sure, fair enough. Um, it's funny, though, that it's, it's these two opposites, one of being like, this is fucked up and wrong, we should end it, which I gotta say, I pretty much agree with. And the other, which is like, I don't care, why do I care? I'm not, the big, the big thing you have to include when you say that is, I'm not doing anything wrong. It's like, oh, okay, well. So, you're not doing anything wrong. Sure, I understand that. Where, how does that, how do you parlay that into saying, thinking, agreeing, that you shouldn't be able to have any personal freedom. Or I'm sorry, you shouldn't be able to have any personal privacy. Like everything should be, you know, surveillable. I remember years ago, somebody who I used to work with, we were on this road trip and I remember he, he had really just started losing his mind a little bit. It really changed as a person. And he was saying he wants more surveillance. He wants more surveillance everywhere. He basically wanted, he thought we should have multiple, basically cameras in every room of every house and every home in the United States. Like, take the money and spend it on that. And not only that, but he wanted to have people monitoring these cameras, okay? Was this sounding a little disturbing to you? This was a guy who was fairly normal, too. In a lot of regards. So, I remember on this road trip, I remember I would, we were like, why? Like, why would you want that? That's, of course we're against that, you know? And he basically just said, because then there will, will be less raping babies. And this is not like, don't go thinking like, this is somebody who got QAnon or something like that. I mean, that's its own, its own brand. I don't know where he got that one. This is, again, somebody who fuck is going on here kind of got obsessed with uh serial killers out of the blue uh, okay and um so yeah that's the opposite thinking and i'm sure he was like well if i'm not doing anything wrong why wouldn't i mind see it just sounds crazy why wouldn't i why would i mind having cameras in every room of my home being surveilled constantly because i'm sorry because you, you should have a right to privacy that's what i think you know <clears throat> it's bizarre Man, this guy is, this guy is fucking crazy, man. Um, it's bizarre to me that that's even a controversial stance to have. Like, that's shocking to me. Anyhow, as I'm aging, are my videos getting more political? I hope not. I'm really not a political person in most regards. You know, I just am not. Uh, so let's talk about the King of Pain. Picking up the King of Pain any minute now. I bet that, no, that's a different plane that just took off. You gotta love just seeing a plane in the sky though, right? Isn't it always pretty cool to see a plane in the sky? I love it when they're like, you know, they're talking about science and they're like, you know, we still, stop. No. They're like, we still don't know exactly how gravity, like we still can't explain gravity. People say that and then I'm sure there's people who are like, no, we can't explain it, here's what it is. And then you have some people who are like, we still don't really know like how a plane stays in the sky. And I think Desert Canyons Parkway, that's the problem. And I think that is the actual, um, how, how do I say it? That is the actual differentiating uh, factor or point. Specifically, Sorry, I don't want to text and drive, but... Uh, oh, totally lost my train of thought. Controversial opinions, politics, something like that. I don't fucking know. Who cares? Right? At the end of the day, you know, let me talk in these three minutes before I pick up the King of Pain. Let me talk about irreverence for a minute, okay? This is another problem in my personal life, is my irreverence. Which again, I gotta thank Whitney Wegman Wood for really cluing me into that word as a good descriptor for my position on most things. She, I remember she just said, I think I get your thing. So it's basically irreverence towards everything. And I was like, whoa, I don't know. I've never actually thought about that. 
and she was right. And, you know, so with this personal problem I've been having, someone asked me, you know, what things do you hold sacred? Which is sort of a way of saying, are there things you don't think you, you are reverent about? Which again, reverence, deep respect, right? And I was like, oh, of course, what's sacred to me? Fam Here's the things that are sacred to me. Family, health, uh, personal relationships, friends, music, art, discipline. Uh, you know, that list, the list can go on. But with my, my take on irreverence, there, I just said this, I just said it for the first time the other day and I really think it. There is no belief system, there is no political system, there is no idea, there is no person, there is no concept, there is no idea, there is no anything that I don't think is a little bit better off with a teenager giving it a middle finger and jacking off on it, okay? And why did I pick a teenager? Now I'm just talking about teenagers jacking off. Come on, you know what I mean. You know, teenagers can say fuck you in a way that nobody else really can. That's just the way it is, you know. Um, and I really mean that though. It's just that I can't, I can't do that. I just can't do that. It's not in my constitution. I don't have the ability to just say this thing is sacred and can never be joked about. To me, the great, you know, light, the great savior, you know, is humor. It's not fucking Jesus. It's not wokeism. It's not a political theory. It's not even drugs. To me, there's just the, the, the one thing that you know, people say like the last thing that you have is your health, right? Like when it's down to that, at least you have that. I'm adding humor right alongside that. And yeah, it comes before health. Like if you're, you can lose humor and comedy and all that, you'd still be glad to be alive, obviously. But I don't know what kind of life it would be. I don't know what kind of life it would be. It's really the thing, humor, okay? It's the thing that makes life tolerable alongside art, which again, you know what, there's the truth. Apart from everything I said earlier about what things are sacred, humor and art, okay? You know why? Because life contains a very real amount of suffering. That's a fact. I don't care who you are or what you do, you're going to suffer. That's part of living, right? And you have humor. There's other things too. There's other things that make your life better. Sex, love, relationships, food. A whole lot of stuff technology but at the bottom of it all it's humor and it's art those are the two things that make life truly tolerable you know or if you want to be happier than saying that life something makes life tolerable because that suggests that life is intolerable you can say those are the things that make life better you can't take those away you can't restrict those you can't fucking limit them oh i'm really like preaching now Truly. All right, picking up the King of Pain. Here we go. Let's see if we can find his fucking ass. This is, by the way, this is what the St. George Airport looks like. Is this kind of like, kind of wild? Let me fucking call his ass up. I think that's down, him down there. I hate to just call him. I'd rather just look, you know? Pretty sure that's the king of pain. Let me see. Oh, Alright, here we have the king of pain. In the flesh. All hail the king of pain. <laughs> Dude, I've been, uh, I was recording the whole way here. This video is called Going to Pick Up the King of Pain. <laughs> oh, man. Is this okay? Yeah. All right. How was your flight, man? Oh, it's great. Yeah? American Airlines. Good you like stuff. that? Good stuff. Didn't make any friends. Sometimes I make friends. Not on this flight. No? People were pretty, pretty to themselves and pretty, 
antisocial, but brought the balance. See how big this fucking thing is? Pretty wild. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, boy, how close do you live to this place? Um, you got, you got that. Fast. Uh, I was already on my way. Oh, like, when you texted, I was nearly here. Yes. Oh, yeah, look at this. I'm like, like I'm, uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. The treatment. Oh, yeah, let me get this uh, tuna salad bowl out of here for you. <laughs> no worries, bro. Sorry if it fucking smells like tuna salad right now. All right, got the king <laughs> of pain. Woo! The king of pain is here in the flesh now. Ah, I don't know how this view is really going to be. And straight to the dispensary. Let's go. <laughs> Do you need to? Do you really want to go to it? <laughs> I wouldn't hate it. Really? No, whenever. We got all day. We do. We they're literally all, all day. Okay, let me think about one thing. I gotta go to the vet. I don't know what time they close. The only thing is, we're kind of. Um, oh, if we're pressed for time, we're all not pressed good. for time. I'm just thinking we're kind of down by where the actual. Like this would be the way to go. Take the other way. Well, then we could take the other way. We could. We could still absolutely go. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a. Um, God, it's gorgeous out here, man. Just wait. You need um, a weed pen, is that why? Or a weed flower? I, yeah, I'm gonna get some something of the sort. So the gummy is not sufficient. Oh, the gummy's needs. great. But not sufficient, necessarily. It won't, it won't give me that punch that it, punch in the face that I'm looking for. Okay. But it'll definitely be nice for when we like wrap the day and go back to your house and fucking look at footage and... and uh, I think you we know. should, okay, so you want to take a little road trip to Mesquite, no problem. I mean, problem. only only if it's if it's fucking uh, going to fuck any of our plans, like the vet, vet or uh I don't think movie. it is, I don't think it is. Well, the, the thing we got to do is go to the, um, we got to go to the vet uh, to get the, my cat is not doing the pills, and uh, she just had her teeth cleaned, it's a fucking nightmare. And uh, she hates me now, I'm trying to give her the goddamn, uh, pills and it's it's gone very poorly so they're giving me a liquid antibiotic what kind of pills uh antibiotic oh okay. yeah so but no, no painkillers uh they gave me painkiller liquid the problem is this is a semi-feral cat okay? okay she's never gonna hurt you or anything but she's um she's very difficult to wrangle right right nearly impossible to stuff a pill in her mouth or even a oh liquid. God, can you like hide it in her food? I've tried that. I've been trying that for days now, and I've had some success with it, but not enough. She needs to take the antibiotics every uh, like, you know, 12 hours, like you do. I'm semi-skeptical that it's all bullshit, anyhow, with the antibiotics. They're like, oh, once you're on, you have to stay on them. I've we've all stopped taking antibiotics halfway through and had nothing happen. I know. Right? <laughs> They're like, the thing is gonna mutate and then it's gonna <laughs> fucking destroy your life and go out and kill other people. It's spread like spread to your family. We've all done it. It's fine. So. We just got to stop there on the way back. Oh, it's, it's so funny. There's this this person who I, I you know I won't name right now in the video. Not that they'll ever watch, but I just I wish fucking absolute death upon her. And the cunt painted a fucking mural. And so I want to like not even drive that way, so I don't have to fucking oh, look at this cunt rags yeah, mural. Yeah, not into her at all. Uh, yeah. Dude, I've never been to this part, this look part of are. the world at all. Oh my this god, this is dude. just spectacular. Wow, dude, you're gonna see some shit. God damn, dude. So what's the, um, do you ever go skiing? No. Is there, are there, there is probably skiing. Mm -hmm. You gotta go up not more. Far so, from here, right? So the one thing to consider is we're in Southern Utah. So despite the fact that you see snow on the mountains and that it's 38 degrees right now, that's very cold for this area. We're like 20 minutes from Nevada. Literally Arizona is right there. Like, in fact, you cross this road right here and it's Arizona. Does it start to get warm quick when you take when you go in certain directions? Like, will it warm up? Like, if you start going south, sure. It'll because it turns into the desert, right? Yeah. Yeah. Seven fifteen. But literally across, like this road is at certain points, not the entire way, but this road is a divider between Arizona and Utah. Not oh, right here, but God at various damn, this points. Is fucking crazy so looking. I'm, I'm only saying that because that's how far south we are, and so basically that means you're never going to have enough snow to ski or snowboard. Right, right. So you got to go north. So Salt Lake City has regular winters. Even two hours, like an hour north of here, is an area called Cedar City, which I actually love. Um, but Cedar City, uh, even they get they get snow, but I doubt they have enough to ski. You know, because even though again we're in Utah, but we're just right next to, we're so far south west that we're by Nevada and Arizona so what what is um how far away are we from Vegas right now two hours 
only a two hour drive. Yeah, it's a pretty regular thing for me to go to Vegas. Like I, I went, gonna I say. went there on Christmas Eve. Um, I'm going there in a few weekends. You and your girlfriend went yeah. ahead and checked that out. Oh, nice. Yeah, Did her, you guys her crash? brother lives there. Okay, we didn't crash. Um, I get, sometimes I get weird about if like if I can drive home in two hours and I'm not on drugs or oh, something. Oh yeah, I know. It's I'd just, often rather just go yeah. back to my own. For pad, sure, you for know? sure. Especially with the animals at home. Yeah, I mean you, you know, know, not that you're not that they can't be left alone for a little bit, but. Dude, well, that I don't two know. hours they can. is great. Dude, it's, yeah, it's quite something. So my, my main dude I work for, his name's Tryhard Ninja, Igor. Um, he might be watching now. I kind of doubt it. It's probably not that interesting of a video for him. But uh, he, so he lives in Vegas, and he's he went there from San Diego just because it was you know better deal on houses, taxes, etc. Uh, you have almost no property or income tax in the state of Nevada. Um, but they have they have other problems. But anyhow, so he lives there, and I I'm having to go help him kind of set up his new gear that he got. So I'm definitely going to be going there in a few weekends. Oh wow! Do you, you ever hit the hours? casinos? I don't. Yeah. I have. So like my friends from high school are like, hey, we're um, you know we're going to Vegas. Why don't you go? And I'm like, all right. Why? How can I say no? I'm two hours away. Like I'll go see these guys. And so I'll go yeah. into the casino with them. But it's just not really my vibe, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm not. I don't know. There's something about those tables that just makes me lose. I, I don't I don't yeah. win at casinos. I just I don't. can't fuck with them. So and, I, and then I get pissed when I lose. So I'm just like fuck this shit. So right here, this you get off at this road and cross, and you're in Arizona. Really? Yeah. That's a great spot to shoot, by the way. Is is this your town right here? Is this uh, like so this your... is Saint. This is probably still Saint George or Washington right here. But yeah, it's the same county. The actual town I live in, so you got to consider St. George is the big city here, right? Which big city doesn't equate to anything that you'd get outside of Utah. But um, I live in Ivan's, which is right next. Well, it's two, two towns away from St. George. So my town is much smaller. Like the county in total probably by now is like 150,000 people. The little town that I live in only has like probably 10 or 12,000 people by now. And that's when I moved, it was only like seven or 8,000. And you met your in, in this town? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is she from here? She's from uh, Centennial Park, which is basically like a polygamist Mormon area. Oh, oh, that's right. In, you told um, me. Arizona. So nearby. Yeah, it's an hour drive. Bas so basically, you think of like, you know, you've heard of Warren Just probably, right? Famous yeah. polygamist pedophile guy. Um, so that's all from one area. And those areas are Centennial Park, and Colorado City, and Hilldale. Damn. They're kind of like sister cities of polygamy and... Um, Had she ever met that dude? No, no, no. So her her family and her entire town, basically, they had a power split, as they call it, in the 80s, where basically, you know, with Warren Jeffs, it was like, that's one guy. They have one conduit to God, so to speak. That's what they believed, right? Wow. And finally, people were, you know, I don't know if, I think, so, I think before everything really came out, there was enough people who were like, hey... We want to have a board of men. Of course, it's only men. You can't have women. But they were like, we want to have a board of like five or six guys. We don't like that it's one guy. And so they had this power split. And they split away from him. So no, she never met him. Wow. And wasn't ever connected with them and stuff. But to give you, and this is not like revealing anything, to give you some perspective, like her, she has a sister who, she has two sisters that are married to the same guy. Yeah. Which you and I are like, whoa, what? It's a crazy thing, but... To them, it's not. It's, it's no. kind of... That's, that's no, and she had one of her sisters who was basically trying to... A different sister who was like, why don't you, like, marry my husband? We'll be sister wives together, like... Wow. It's um, interesting. Yeah, she broke away from it. She's not part of it anymore. Um, you know, I have to, like, carefully and politely say that there's definitely some overlapping over uh so there's a fucking after image of some of that stuff in certain regards you got to consider i were you raised religious at all or no oh yeah definitely <laughs> what kind of religion were you raised? well i mean kind of non-denominational i went to lutheran churches a lot i mean even went to like baptist churches and stuff what about like he heaven hell stuff like that like pretty, oh pretty firm oh uh i mean the way i was raised yes but i mean as i've gotten older i my i kind of have my own feelings I, I don't I don't really it doesn't make sense that a place like hell exists right <laughs> if anything this is hell fair enough I so, mean so the reason I ask is that you know there's this like indoctrination basically right it's like brainwashing it's before you've really formed your identity as a person before you have any fucking clue who you are you have your parents I certainly did I was raised born again Christian yeah you basically same, had, same. that's what I yeah that's so what you I have your parents and you have the church basically telling you like here's eternal damnation and suffering and here's 
streets paved with, with gold with all your friends and yeah. heroes and limitless possibilities and joy and sadness and depression don't exist. Um, you got to consider whatever we had when you live in a town like she came from, it's totally different. Like there, you have that stuff, but then they have to like fiercely, fiercely, um, oh shit, I got to take care of. They, they fiercely uh, defend their religion because they're just trained to and they're taught to like you know I had some of this maybe you did too where they were like you don't, you don't want people to like fuck up your faith you know there's bad things you want to stay away from but oh, yeah. they were really taught like to completely fear the outsider yeah like, like the outsider is going to come and they're going to fuck up your mind and your religion yeah, like, they're going to drag friends you down with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and so that in a town like that there wasn't even great concern until you have like apostates or people who have left the religion like her brother left and then Another oh, brother left, and, and then, then she that's left. kind of thre a threat, isn't it? Total. Well, yeah, I'm sure. I almost guarantee that in her um, family's eyes, like the one brother that left is the reason that the other people left. But it's, and even in that town, it's literally is the outside. There's nobody who's coming into that town for the most part who's not already like part of that family or one of the families, and the families are fucking huge, you know. And she got 23 siblings. Holy shit! What is her? What are her? Uh, what does her dad do? Her mom and dad do? There, so you're having the idea that there's a bunch of money, right? Or that you need a bunch of money yeah. for that? Not really. Like, she grew up in some poverty, and then eventually her mom is, like, a principal now. I forget her dad. Okay, so in this fucking state, especially in this city, the, you got you know how you have, like, Michigan. What's the industry? It's the auto, automotive industry, right? What is it in L.A.? It's the film industry. And you could go on, and there's usually one thing that's predominantly in a town and in a lot of foreign countries and a lot of tourist towns, the industry is tourism, right? For sure. Here it's religion. That's just a very real thing. Basically just means that the jobs, everything's connected to the church one way or another. So they they have just, the Mormon church has like a colossal amount of money and, you know, it's all, they have the whole infrastructure here. But it doesn't mean that somebody like me can't exist here. Like, I've talked to a, a couple different people. Let me think of where we are. Bring them around. Okay. I've talked to a couple different people who basically were like, Brigham Young. Wait, let me think of where I really need to go to use the vet. Uh, yeah, Brigham Young, right? Brigham Young. Really, My yeah. joke is bring them young. Bring them young because that's, you know. Is, like, like is any, Mitt, Mitt Romney from around here? I don't was know. Was he one of those? He was one of those. Oh, no, no, no. He's Mormon. Sorry. Well, Mitt, yeah, that's the same shit. Oh, it's the yeah, same? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So there's FLDS is just uh, fundamental Latter-day Saints. So fundamental Latter-day Saints is, or LDS is usually how Mormons refer to themselves now. Uh, oh. Mainly because Mormon has gotten a bad rap at this point. Um, so they still like the Book of Mormon. You know, it's all about Joseph Smith and everything else. But um, because Mormon has a bad rap, they will traditionally, you know, the ones who are chilled out will just say, I'm LDS. But the ones who want to, you know, follow it by the letter, they're basically um, instructed to say, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is a pretty big mouthful, which is why you can understand why Mormon or LDS is better. But yeah, Mitt, Mitt Romney, he's a, he's a Utah senator. I don't know what his actual political position is. He's a congressman or senator, yeah, but he's definitely, like uh, he's definitely he's definitely a Utah guy. Yeah. I don't know if he's from this town. I kind of doubt it, but... I know he's from around, like, Salt Lake somewhere. He's one of those guys, you can just tell some of them are fucking evil, like him and John Kerry. Oh, my God. Like, For I don't real. know much. I was just on this same video that I hope somebody watches, was talking about um, politics and politicians and shit. I guess I should take the next one. Yeah, I can. Um, but there, I, there's just some people you can just fucking tell are not good, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, John, I feel like John Kerry and fucking Mitt Romney and... Christie. I was just thinking of Chris Christie. I, he, I don't know why though. Just because he's fat, like, or is he? What? What is? What makes him bad exactly? What makes is it just he seems kind of bad? I mean, he literally. He just like to what? To what lengths a person can be bought? Yeah. <laughs> you know. He's one of those. Oh, huh? okay. You know, fucking. Um, did you by any chance this is a total left turn in the combo? Did you ever? Did you see what that weird like Miami mall? thing that went down no did you hear about that all these there was like some kids Check got in a fight in the uh in a, got in a like a fight in a mall and like like a hundred cop cars showed up to it wow oh you have to you have to go down that rabbit hole but and what is like, uh like what is the significance well of the rabbit that? hole is that it's like no it was like the biggest police response to anything ever Who? it was like 
helicopter footage, it just showed cop cars for miles. And like, they don't even do that for like active shooters. Mm. And what had, and like during the whole thing, somebody had like, somebody said that their aliens had been sighted at the mall. There was like mm. these 10 foot alien family of aliens that were walking around the mall. That sounds amazing. And so, yeah, and so like, but then people shut that down and then, but then there's no video. There's no, you know, when, when high schoolers get in big fights, there's always video, right? Right, right. But there's no video from inside the mall from these firework kids shooting off fireworks in the mall huh. and, and fighting each other with sticks. And like, why do a hundred cop cars show up to that? And like, and then there's the alien, I don't know, some alien stuff is great, man. Oh, they're throwing, they're full on throwing it at us now, aren't they? It seems I don't know, like I haven't seen too much. I mean, where did you hear about that one specifically? That well, I was I was in Florida when it happened. Okay. And now it's kind of gone national. It's all over Reddit. And, Damn, and, I and missed that one. Oh yeah, no. If you look, all you have to do is Google Miami Mall, hmm. uh, and you'll you'll there's that rabbit hole's weird. The uh, I mean, alien stuff is great in general. I would love uh, Leslie Keen or Leslie Klein's book. Just it's called UFOs. It's She's kind of the first journalist who wrote like a pretty honest account, and she's primarily in, uh, interviewing uh, ex-military and government officials, ex-government officials, and stuff like that, ex you know, aviators. And then um, Paul Pope has a great book called UFOs in the Security State. And then one of the classics is called, and, um, it's not Close Encounters of the Third Kind, I forget what he calls it, uh, but it's J. Allen Hynek, who you probably heard of if you read about yeah. him and stuff. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. So I guess we could take this road. Close and, um, encounters of the third. Oh, right. Yeah, that's totally not the name. I'll think of the name. Oh, I think it's called the the UFO experience. So he was, you know, Project Blue Book. There's a whole stuff. Anyhow, one of the most interesting ones to me is uh, the Chicago one, where you just have a bunch of people who just saw this UFO over O'Hare Airport, and then it just shot straight up through the, the sky and made a fucking hole in the clouds. And, you know, they were like, how the, you know, people were like, that's not what it was. And they were like, well, look at the cloud. And they're like, that's a hole punch cloud. And what a hole punch cloud is. And it's an actual weather phenomenon. But it, it I think what happens is the clouds have to like freeze and then a part of it will fall out. Weird. But uh, they were just saying like at that time, like that elevation, there's no way it would have been cold enough to create a hole punch cloud, which, you know, it's always, well, the, that's and, always the story, isn't it? Like some crazy shit happened they're like it's not what it was i know i know, you know? well and plus the people had actually said they'd seen something didn't they yeah, oh yeah like, yeah a like a people. lot of people which you know i can go back and forth on because if you like say like well what about biblical times and people you know a bunch of people saw this like we now a lot of times people look back and they're like well belief is really powerful mass hallucination is a real thing mass hysteria is a real thing or you have on the other side of it you have zechariah sitchin who's the main um the main uh, UFO, uh, ancient, the, sorry, the main ancient aliens guy, okay? Before ancient aliens was like a pop culture thing, he wrote a nine volume series where he talked about like the Anunnaki and like all the fucking oh, yeah. aliens and stuff. Oh yeah, totally. So that was his explanation is like, well, they weren't angels, they were fucking aliens. There's a Mormon temple, by the way. Oh. There's you, two of them now, but that's like the big, the original one. Are you familiar with Bill Cooper? Uh-uh. He's a good one to go down. He's he's uh he was an old fo old navy naval captain or something, and he saw some stuff, and then he started like bringing it to attention it, it, to his superiors in the navy, and he eventually they were like, you know too much. You, we gave you too much clearance, and now we wish we hadn't, because he's like he wasn't standing for it, and he started like kind of whistleblowing, and then they eventually uh they killed him right oh, after. Sorry, uh, oh no, you're good. They killed him like in his front yard, like month after 9-11. Jeez. What's the other guy who's like... David Icke? No, no. This is considered... I mean, not that David Icke is not credible. David Icke is just not his own brand. Yeah. Who's yeah. the guy who... Bob Lazar, right? Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. I don't know much about him. <coughs> but he's definitely... He's definitely all up in it. What do you think of David Icke? I mean, damn. I mean, he's... I, I kind of... I kind of have an interesting perspective because he started out in TV production mm -hmm. and some of the things that he's talked about I can relate to like when you see when you see what it takes to fake something to make TV um, you can spot it you can spot basically fake faked events once you once you've taken part in making it yourself and so he was just 
that's how he got started in it. He was like, well, I was always having to fake events as a, as a journalist, have to pull off all these bullshit just to lie to people. And then I just kept going further and further and realized that it was a big pedophile network that, I don't know, it, it certainly could be true. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, seems about as... Seems about as realistic of a... Well, pedophile you know. network stuff, obviously Epstein, like, it's sort of just common knowledge that is what happened. I had a really, I was, like, on mushrooms doing a salt. Have you ever done a saltwater float? No. Oh, dude, so you would love them. You basically go into, or they have one here, you go into a, a bathtub, so to speak, and it's with water that's the same temperature as your body, 98.7. Oh, yeah. And the room is the same temperature as your body as well. Completely soundproof completely dark if you want or you can turn on their cool lights and you just float because the water is so um, saturated with Epsom salts that you just completely float on your back and um, so anyhow I was in there having wow. this, this trip on mushrooms as well it was a pretty minor trip but uh, I, it was right when I was just thinking about all this Epstein stuff in the news which seems to never end and I just was thinking like wow that's such a crazy world they have where it's just like wow that's when you just have billions and billions of dollars it's not even a secret their, their main thing is like well we want the best of everything and for us. That includes fucking like underage girls and being able to do whatever we want, maybe torture them. And, just you know. unreal. Yeah, so that's not even weird to me. That's just, I mean, that's I don't just, wanna, I'm not, uh, yeah, what's you're the not word? Advocating I'm, not, I'm not advocating or, um, there's an even better word, I'm not approving of that, whatever. But the thing with David Icke, where it's like, well, geez, now I don't know what you're talking about now, is the reptilian stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, that's, that he was, he's the OG reptilian humanoid guy. Definitely. I mean, that's basically what he's known for. Although now he's, he'll, I don't think he'll ever become a full blown Alex Jones because his stuff is just a little too far out that people can't be like, oh shit, it, you're it's pretty, right. It's pretty far out. <laughs> yeah, I know. <coughs> David Icke's pretty far out there. I mean, and Alex Jones is just kind of just more on, more, you know, down to earth things. Like. I, what's happening now? He's got Jim Brewer on. He's, uh, he's with Tucker. Like they're kind of the same thing now. It's, I think what's happening is that it's just, people are looking at it and they're like, oh, well, wait, what? They were right. And they're just like, what can I say now? Like, these are facts, you know, like, I don't, I don't like that the world works like this, but this is just. Dude, seriously. It appears to be real, you know? Do you want to wait here or do you Bubbles want to go in? Bubbles and barks, yay! Yeah. Do you want to chill here or do you oh, want to go in? Oh, come in. You're picking up your cat, right? No, just uh, meds. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, welcome to St. George, King of Pain. Yeah. Is the weather here a lot different than, good. uh, a lot different than, uh, New Jersey right now? Yeah. Remind me, are you in Weehawken or North Arlington? It's it's basically Weehawken. Yeah. Um, it, what, the sun hasn't been out in a damn while. Gotcha. So this is a Like, let's, let's make this 
I mean, I have two shows that I've worked on in the last two years that we filmed the entire season, 12 episodes, and neither of them aired. Mm. That doesn't, that's the first time that ever happened to me, and that happened twice in one year. It's, I don't know, it's strange. What's HFR? I am, uh, uh, the, uh, Something to do with vinyl record records? Company. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. In, in Los Angeles. Um, but, it's crazy, man. It's made me, like, I don't know what's Bogdan's, what's going on with him, but... Now, how's he, he, how's he been doing? He's, he's been kept it up, he's, he's staying busy. Yeah, right he's now. still editing, but for me, it's like, and it's made me think, like, think about other careers, which is, I never had that happen. It's made me have to sell again. Yeah. And f it was so funny. I was talking to a buddy of mine. And I was like, man, how does it, how bad does it sound to have to start trying to sell again? Just basically get yourself jobs, right? And he was, I was just like, I just think how bad it would be. And he was like, I wouldn't do it. And he was like, I just <laughs> retire and go back to Ohio, is basically what he said. So Jesus. I started doing it. I'm always drumming up. I'm always like, hey, yeah. two hours special for a hundred bucks or right. something. Like, just like I just to get something going. 100%. But as far as like for me to get another like my big guy that I work for, I've tried to do that. It's like, it's as depressing as I thought it was going to be. So like 10% 10 per, 10 of the people will even respond to you and then just to say no, the rest of them don't respond. And even then it's just, I haven't, I haven't really drummed up anything. So I have this idea though, it's just an idea that's totally not based in reality, but with the guy who owns all that gear, that DP I was yeah. talking about, it's like, man, there's him, there's my buddy Mark who does the editing, and I do the sound, like it's literally everything you need to have a full-scale production house, sure. right? Yeah. 100% and, you know, could work for less than a lot of other people, but, and it's just like, my joke was like, you just you just start an ad agency, because that's, yeah. that's the company who basically gets the clients, right? And then says, go use yeah. this production house, we'll make a thing for you. And um, it's, you know, it's, you know, once upon a time, that would have been like saying like, well, let's, let's start, hey, oh, yeah. that would have been like saying, let's, um, let's build Boeing aircrafts or something yeah. ridiculous. Like, yeah. oh, sorry. Well, let's, like, that's my yeah. mom's thinking is like, let's build Boeing aircrafts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but now you could, you don't have to have a brick and mortar thing if you want to start that agency. You know? Totally. Uh, how did you meet that guy? Is, does he live out here? No, he lives in New Jersey. Oh, he lives in New Jersey? What's his last name? Breeze, Mark Breeze. Are you talking about DP himself? Yeah. DP's name is Pat Donnelly. No. I don't think he's not a name necessarily. The yeah. company is also not a name. They're called Cinema 5 Films. Did he ever do any trauma stuff? No. Yeah. He was like yeah. real he's like, like he made real stuff. Yeah, no like, offense to yeah, yeah. Wrap that up. It's like, you know, this is a joke. Like, my mom will come up with these ideas. She's like, why don't you open a restaurant? Just something that's like, what? Like, it's, you know, oh, it's yeah. all my time gone and more yeah. money than I have. So, no, it's right. not practical. I'll let you do it. Yeah. I keep thinking I'm with like, a woman here. Start Microsoft yeah. Why don't we, let's put Bill Gates out of business. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, the, but then I'm like, man, it really does seem like, couldn't I just. You know, if I could, first of all, it would cost nothing. Eventually, you'd have to have insurance and stuff or hire somebody to make a website, but it's just fucked up to me to know all these creatives who have all the gear and everything and we're like out of work. So in my mind, I'm like, they didn't stop making commercials. They didn't stop, you know, shooting yeah. them. And if you watch YouTube, you see some pretty fucking stupid commercials that aren't well shot, the audio is shit, the shot is shit. And so I, I was just talking with the, the guy, the DP dude, and I was like, man, if I if I could figure out a way just to like start getting us a client or two, I would just do it. And there's like no really no overhead anymore. You don't have to have a place, you know. But that's that's an easier thing, easier um, said than done, of course. But uh, I don't know. There might be something to that. My my main point is that uh, something has to happen, and the jobs are not dropping in our laps anymore. No, it's you know, and I, like you have to do something about it. Yes, yes, or fucking pack your bags and fucking go home, right? I know, dude. I it's. Um, you belong in a fucking in a casket. 
You know, despite yeah. having gotten most of my rage out by uh, exercising today, I still have feelings. But well, yeah, I mean, we could always go throw some paint on that thing. Oh, you know, can you imagine if you did mind. that? Um, yeah, no. I mean, I, I think about you too. Like, I know you either have gear or there's rental houses, and I know you have all this shooting experience. There's something that's not right to me about it. I was even gonna say when I'm I'm moving to Michigan pretty soon now. Like, I'm I'm going there February 28th. I'm trying oh, wow. to fucking get a house. I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. And I was just gonna say, like, just move to Michigan. Whatever you got going on in New Jersey, just I jump know, ship. I know. Move to Michigan, and then let's try to make that happen S there. Start living a lot cheaper, and yeah. just and just do it there. Yeah. Wow. Dude, this is amazing. Yeah, this, so this is the main drag in St. George. So there's, this town is very, you know, this is called St. George Boulevard. Main Street is right up there, and that's like basically the heart of St. George. And wow. I'll tell you something, they have a pretty interesting system here, despite being um, based in religion. It's kind of effective. So all the streets, like, see how this is 500 east? Okay. The next one's going to be 400 east. Once we get to Main Street, it's going to be 100 west and 200 west and so on. So you think that's all about where the main street is, but it's not. See this 400 east? That means we're 400 blocks east of the church. Oh, no way. Yeah, so the whole, like the whole system, basically when you're at Main Street and Center Street, or whatever they call it in the area, that's where the churches are. So the, the whole thing is based around you always being able to find your way back to church, oh which is God. fucking ridiculous. But it's a little crazy. It's also kind of like, it's not much different than mile roads or something, like 26, 27 mile road, like you kind of know where things are, you know? Yeah, are there a lot of Mormon folks in, the, in around here? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Oh yeah, this is a predominantly Mormon area. But compared to a lot of towns outside of here, this is not that Mormon. Like it's definitely changing in a major way. Has changed a lot since I've been here. A lot of people from California coming in. I was gonna say, is it an expensive place to live? Like, well, yeah, like uh, proper, property values everywhere, are probably, is now, everywhere, you know? everywhere is. But uh, compared to a lot of places, no. There's a reason why people are moving here from California because you get more for your money and property taxes are lower like pro i will say that property taxes here like the house i live in the property taxes for the fucking year i think were like fourteen hundred dollars or something unreal unreal maybe even less than that whereas like you know michigan it's gonna guaranteed to be for that the house i live in it would be like you know thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars in property taxes and yeah, probably more even but yeah. yeah well so man this doesn't seem like a this seems like a pretty safe little town. I'm just like it is. It just, I mean, they have some meth here, and they have some. Yeah, uh, they have crime, but it's like yeah, it, but this it's is not, not somewhere where you're gonna get rolled ever. Like absolutely not. You can walk not. around here in the middle of the night anywhere you want, and you're, you're never gonna have a fucking problem. Now, they do have one area that's by a gas station and a trailer park, and that's basically where most of the crime yeah, happens. That's where the bad. Yeah, happen. I've never really spent much time there, but uh, oh, how's your temperature? Are you okay oh, right I'm now? Oh, great. All right. Look at those homes on the ridge. That's so sick. Yeah, they have a restaurant up there. I've never been to it. It's supposed to be really nice. Have you explored this? So how long have you lived in this town now? Since 2020. 2020? Okay, yeah. so you, you know it pretty pretty good. You this like, town I know very pretty, well. Pretty, yeah. pretty good. Uh, there's not much to know. It's pretty, there's not a whole lot here. I will say it again, they've, it's gotten better and there is cool stuff here. But on your average Friday, Saturday, or Sunday when you're like, what's going on? Let me go on, you know, things happening this weekend in St. George, Utah. It's almost nothing. It's like a farmer's market, a witchy farmer's market, uh, a play at a schoolhouse. Like, there's just not much here, which was part of the appeal to me was just that it's... Um, Oh yeah, definitely. It, it felt like when I visited here, I was like, damn, this area is like leave it to beaver. Like this feels like the 1950s, like stuck in time. And in a lot of ways it is stuck in time. You know what? There's, there's, there's less of it now. It's in the minority, but like they don't want outsiders coming in. So like there's trucks where you still see that has like a California prohibited, like yeah. we don't want you here. And then another one that says like, don't California, my Utah. But largely, I mean, look how cool this is. We're just like by the downtown. There's just fucking red rocks. It's wow. The West so, is beautiful, man. So, um, is there like a place where you could go, like, do a live mic or, or like, an open, open mics? mic? Yeah, like, yeah, does that yeah. exist here? Well, my basically my best male friend owns the cafe that's now the hippest spot in town. It had only just opened probably a year and a half ago, and so all my shows, like all the film ones you've seen here, they've all been there, other oh, than nice. one. Like I played at the Electric Theater once, but like a coffee shop situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's literally the best scene tonight is the the karaoke at his cafe. Might have to check it. Yeah, but well, we're gonna be watching the Jason Statham movie. However, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. We can back out of that. We oh, can no. back out of oh, that. Oh look at that trail. That looks like a cool bike riding trail. Yeah. Oh, there's some amazing mountain biking around here, isn't there? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Do you ever do that? I haven't done mountain biking. I do like riding my bike, and I've gone on 
I really done any trails? I don't know. I have more, uh, I have more just, I'm just stay on pavement for the most part. Again, this, this weather is crazy, man. I mean, this is like probably the coldest it's ever felt to me out here. Oh, for real? Oh yeah. It like never rains and you're kind of used to the same thing as like LA weather where it's just fucking perfect. All wow. Year really? Other than it gets way fucking hotter here than it does LA. In the summertime? Oh, dude, does it, it, gets, just roast? it can get become like 105 degrees, 110 degrees. Like you Oof. come back and part of your car is melted for no reason. Oh man. Just um, so really? same thing with Vegas. It gets extremely hot. Mesquite is the same thing. And, um, that's one of the reasons people like LA because it never gets like, it can get hot, but it's never like 105 degrees for several days on end. But it gets like that here. Damn dude. So, so, um, have you ever, have you ever done any camping out here? It seems like a um, cool place. Not really. It definitely would be a yeah, cool place. Yeah. Though. No shortage of places to just disappear, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I imagine that once you're outside of this area, you just turns into wilderness pretty quick doesn't it uh yeah so that's like where we're going to be shooting on sunday is it's just called blm land that's bureau of land management which technically is your public lands right that means it belongs to the people and it's managed by the blm the bureau all that really means is you know they try to stop people from setting fires they try to do other things which a lot of people disagree with like you should technically be able to go like cut down trees and get firewood from there but they don't like you doing that and um, and then yeah. they just stop. They stop. You know, there's so that BLM land. You can base it. Used to be, you can go live there indefinitely, no rent, no nothing. You just live out of your car, your camper. Now it's the same thing, except now they've limited it to two weeks at a time, and then you have to move. Grant, I don't know what the rule is. For a while, they were saying like you could literally move five feet away, and it would count. So there's just we're surrounded by these areas where you can go park and do whatever you want, and there's no policing there's no emergency services wow. granted if you're doing something like highly illegal the bureau is gonna like probably catch wind of it right um, or if you're just trying to live in one spot for six months you're gonna be asked to move but that's where you can shoot guns and do whatever you want and live in a van and oh yeah and so there's van life is huge in this town i have my friend heather who's going to be in the video on uh sunday oh nice she lives in front of my house she oh, just nice. lives in her car like so they we don't they don't have like if you can see it i mean take a look around how many homeless people do you see anywhere none yeah, right none like so, this doesn't they're here but they're generally living out of cars and stuff because i guess they like just arrest you and kick you out if you try to be homeless here you know wow so does is uh so is does that Heather have a gig? Heather? Yeah. Heather's She's doing mostly DoorDash, yeah, okay, DoorDash yeah. type stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, the van life idea in general is kind of cool and sort of sensible. Like there's people who do it in LA and they're like, yeah, like I want to be able to buy a house one day, so I'm saving a shitload yeah, of it, money it, by not having rent. It makes sense. You know, and I just have a gym membership and whatever and they make it work and I, it sounds in a lot of ways like that kind of like peripatetic fantasy is very appealing to me. I know, dude. But then it's also like, oh, what? Like, what about when you got to take a shit? Like, to not have access to a bathroom just sounds like it sucks at the same time. Like, you're literally yeah. camping at any time. And, Every time, But yeah. then again, you can always go to the your gym. You can go to your 24-hour gym. You go to the fucking restroom that you use. You go to the park. and Totally. But So there's a lot of van life out here. We're going to kill this king. Are you all right? Any last words you want to say? Uh, a music video about your travels? Anything? Man, um, yeah, um, I think as long as, as long as the only thing I am, only thing is I'm allergic to cats. You're kidding me. Really, really bad. So this has got to be a joke. No, no, not at all. I just saw this th cat thing right here. That's what made me think of it. No. I'm, like, I'm like, what is, we what, didn't talk about this. Uh, uh Oh my God. Is that a problem? You don't have a cat, do you? You're fucking with me. You have a cat. I have six cats. Oh, all right, well, let's call Heather. Maybe she's got room in her back seat. You're, I can't tell if you're joking or not, though. <laughs> I brought my inhaler. We're good. Okay. You yeah. sure? I actually brought two inhalers. We did. Did I not? But say we should I, still call Heather. Yeah, yeah. Did I not say I have cats? Did I not warn <laughs> no, you? I'm totally kidding. Okay, okay. Wait, so you're not allergic, or you are? No, allergic? I, I am, but it's like that's childish shit. I've got inhalers. We're good, dude. Okay, okay. We're good. Wow, I thought this was like like you wouldn't be able to walk yeah, in the house. You're like fuck. I mean, if it ends up being that, we'll figure something. I'll put you up at a yeah. hotel or whatever nah, we have to do. We good. Well, guys, I'll just, I'll he, just go there. You fuck it to the taffy shop. Breathe care. Breathe care. Okay, shit. 
This is a remarkable thing. Like, look how big that building is. It's a <laughs> taffy shop. shop that no one ever goes to. <laughs> There's weird businesses out here like They're that. still paying their rent. Yeah, they're like fronts. Well, guys, you saw it here. The King of Pain got me. Uh, you had The camera was on him. It wasn't on me. But you heard the trepidation of my voice. He really did get me there. Um, so, all right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.